Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. I'm Matt. And I'm Diana. And winter is here. We have ground covered with a little bit of dusting of snow and it's also cold this morning. It this is. It's just like 35, you said? Uh, less than that, about 32. It's 30. not the coldest morning that we've had on the property, uh, but we are bundled up. I think I've got like five layers on under this shirt. <laughs> I feel like the Michelin man right now, but I am nice and warm at least. But that is not going to stop us to mill some two by fours. Today may be our last day of milling. Uh, yeah. It is a week before, or just under, uh, just over a week before Thanksgiving, and we're leaving Vermont just a few days after Thanksgiving on December first. So we've got basically two weeks to get everything sorted and done. Yeah. And there's a lot of little jobs that need doing. There's a lot of tidy up. We're going to have to put everything away for the winter. Make sure everything's protected and safe. And like maintenance and all the things. Sure oil changes before yeah. we put things away. Make sure they've all got clean oil in before the winter and we're kind of at the mercy of the weather we can't be doing all that stuff when it's raining or yeah. at least we don't want nice. to be doing, <laughs> doing all that stuff when it's raining too much especially if we're putting things away for the winter we don't want to put things away wet if we can avoid it so our plan is to mill as much as we can today particularly the logs that are still on the ground the pine logs here and then i think after today we'll switch our focus to some kind of prep tasks for the leaving yeah and uh today we, I think we will be able to just focus on the milling because we have figured out the roof situation with the tarps and we have uh, a pile of uh, stickers right there that should be enough for the layers that we need for two by fours. So I think it's time to get stuck in. Okay, so we did not quite start with what we said we were going to start with on the mill. Once we started looking at the log pile and what we had, uh, we decided just to temporarily change tack and deal with this pile of logs. We have got some big pine logs here. This one at the bottom is 30 inch diameter at the fat end. You may remember this is one of those big pines that came down from our driveway clearing. This causes us two problems. One is these are way too big for our tractor to lift as uh, 16, 17 foot logs. And honestly, this bottom one in particular, maybe one of these other ones as well, this is probably too heavy for us to lift as an eight and a half foot log, even if we split it in two. We don't know and we won't know until we split it in two to try. So, um, we want to get these off the ground. These have been sitting on the ground for a couple of months. Right now they're still looking okay, but we certainly don't want to leave them on the ground all winter. We would love to get them onto our skids over there, the big rails in the rest of the pile, but we need to be able to lift them with a the tractor to do so. So what we're gonna try and do is pull these other three out. The back one, I think I can probably lift as a long log. I don't think I probably can with these two, but we're gonna try it and then we'll split them in half uh, lengthways if we have to. That will leave us with just this absolute monster at the front because the second problem we have with this one is it's actually too big for our mill in terms of diameter. Our mill can do up to 26 inches and we did a 24 inch log on there uh, last week. And even that was a bit tricky. You've gotta get it perfectly lined up. So this thing at 30 inches is too big, which means we really have two choices. One is we use the uh, the chainsaw and we kind of cut the edges off. So we, we sort of begin trimming it down, squaring it off, taking off some of these big sections here that are way too big for the mill, taking off some of the bark, which is pretty thick on here, and seeing if what we can get down to is a log that will fit on the mill. The second option is we just rip it in half straight down its length. So cut it in half into eight and a half sections and then cut each of those in lengthways to give us kind of two 
semicircle uh, shaped logs. These are easy to put on the mill, they'll be easy enough to lift with a tractor. We lose the ability to get those real nice slabs out of the center and it'll cost us a little bit of wood in that respect. I'd rather not do that, but it's probably the easier option. Even that's not trivial because our chainsaw blade is 18 inches, which means I've got to line up two passes all the way through here. So that is going to be tricky as well. For now, we're going to try and put off this problem. Get these three logs out. That's how we solve problems. It's, it's the easiest problems. way to solve it. Honestly, like all joking aside, if we can put off this problem until next year, there'll be at some point an excavator here or a skid steer or something that can lift this. And then all we have to worry about is the, uh, the, the diameter being too big. And one of those vehicles, we can use that to lift it onto the mill as a 16 foot length. So rather than trying to solve that problem today, if we don't have to, we're gonna try and clear these out of the way and then actually just put some, roll this forward, put some skids on the ground behind it and kind of push it back onto its own special little pile of just this one log here, <laughs> get it off the ground for winter and we'll see if that works. Uh, so that's the plan. To do that, like I say, we need to get these logs out first. So that's what we're gonna work on. We were so close. The uh, the log behind here is 17 feet long. We managed to drag it out with a chain and the tongs, but it was just too heavy for the tractor to lift. That is as high as the tractor can lift it, and this end is still on the ground down there. So we're gonna cut it in half to two eight and a half foot sections with a chainsaw, and then we'll move those over the pile. We are trying to keep logs longer where we can. It's easier to store them, and it gives us more options when we're milling. Uh, but in this case, this is just too much log for this tractor to lift. So today we are going to try and up level our lunch a little bit. In this cold weather we've been bringing thermos flask with soup and other hot things in. Today we're trying something a bit different. We picked up this rice cooker and it only pulls about 200 watts which means we can run it off this little inverter and this 12 volt battery pack that we have. So today we have cooked some rice, uh, it's been going about 40 minutes now in there and we've brought some thermos flask with some chilli and we're going to have our own little uh, hot lunch chilli today. Mm. So this is just what I needed. Oh, especially, you probably can't see on the camera. It's actually but snowing. It's, it's snowing, flurries. Mm. That is good. I'm trying to avoid spilling it down myself now. <laughs> Although my shirt is so disgusting, it doesn't matter. So Matt had an idea how to do this, to get the log off of the ground on fairly high uh, skids. I did not think it's gonna work. Diana thought I was an idiot. It was probably deserved, but the, the, the idea was we, we want to get these off as high as high off the ground as possible so that there's the least chance of like moisture underneath wicking up and as the snow builds up and things. Because the ground is uneven. And the ground isn't even, yeah. So the first idea that we had was like, can we just pull it straight up onto some other uh, sticks and, or logs as, as skids? No, it's so heavy, it just, it won't roll so much as just like slide them along. So I was like, what we need is ramps. We've got ramps. The equipment <laughs> trailer has ramps. So we grabbed the steel ramps off the back of the equipment trailer. Uh, they just held on with a couple of, uh, a couple of pins, pulled the, uh, the rail out, pulled the, uh, the ramps off, and then basically put those, we rolled the log forward, put the, uh, the ramps kind of behind, so the log was already trying to roll backwards up yeah. the, the ramps, and then put our skid logs at the end of the ramps. Um, 
and well, overlapping. Well, a little bit overlapping, yeah. yeah. So then we're able to sort of uh, let the the log roll back a little bit, then use the tractor to kind of pull it back and roll it up up the ramps, and uh, and onto the the skids. And then we just sort of shuffled it a little bit to get the ramps out afterwards. How much does it annoy you that this works? Can you get the ramp out? Oh my god. Yeah, does that feel pretty steady though? Does it look like it's a good resting point? I think it is. I could move it a little bit further and it would land up against this knot on there. No, I'd rather put this. Okay. Pretty solid, I think. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, I don't think it's going anywhere though. Yeah. The end result is this is now raised probably close to a foot off the ground, uh, which is about the best I think we can do. I think I wasn't so worried about that it wouldn't work. I was so worried that it would work, but it would take like an hour to figure it out. And you're also worried we we're going to lose the ramps under there. Um, yes. <laughs> but we don't need them anyway uh, this winter. So they, well, they we'll need them in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we've, we've got the log up here, and actually, this kind of technique I think we may end up doing again to get some of the big logs up onto the mm. the uh, sawmill. Uh -huh. One of the techniques we've seen some other people use is actually to build like a little loading deck next to the sawmill. Where we've got it positioned right now, we couldn't do that. Um, but if we move it around in spring, we may just give ourselves space. We can load logs onto there, and then you just sort of you a stack of them on there and then yeah. you just roll them across from there. Yeah. That would also help us get the really heavy ones onto the sawmill without lifting them as high, as high or even at all like this. Yeah. Um, and also without like maxing the tractor out quite so badly. Yeah. Um, so our plan for the day changed. <laughs> We're not going to be milling. Um, we, you know, we had lunch and it's, you know, maybe three hours left. So uh, basically we had two jobs, big jobs left is milling the two by fours and uh, getting the logs off the driver into the, onto our piles. And, and off the ground here. Off the ground here. Onto the piles. Yeah, so this portion here we have done. So now for the rest of the day, we'll, we'll get the logs. Yeah, rather than doing like two or three hours milling, yeah. we're gonna head down the driveway, pull out some, some of the logs that we can from these sides. And especially since right now it's still relatively dry, so we can do that and it's pretty cold. So moving more, it's helpful to keep warm. Yeah. Um, but also it's gonna rain and I guess snow in the next couple of days. So once we come back, it's gonna be wet and it's just really not nice to pull out logs when everything's wet. So no. we'll do that today. Cool, let's do it. change of plans again. We started pulling out logs along the driveway, but the um, tank in the tractor is pretty much empty. So we stopped doing that. So, and uh, it's like 2.40 and it's only a couple hours before it starts getting dark. So we're not gonna start milling, but instead what I'm gonna do is start painting the ends of the logs and the uh, lumber so that there's less chance of uh, cracking as they dry out. So I'll start with the lumber that we milled first and then I'll move on to the logs. And for now, we're using this anchor seal, but we only have one can of this, so we might run out. Uh, it was, um, we ended up buying it from Amazon because we couldn't buy it locally and now it might be too late to order another one. So we might have to find some different kind of paint to paint if we run out. Mm -hmm. 